When I first found out about the Fantech Max Fit 81, I immediately got excited because it features something that a lot of people are looking after, an OLED display on a mainstream budget keyboard. Not only that, but it also features south-facing hot-swappable PCB, a volume knob, a tried and tested 75% layout with a highly customizable gasket mount design, and most importantly, tri-mode connectivity. So on paper, it pretty much checks all my boxes. However, this keyboard has some quality control issues that need to be addressed. With that being said, let's get into it. The packaging is pretty decent with a black box with an image preview in front and some of its key features at the back. What I have here is the pre-built variant with Gatron G Pro 2.0 yellow switches and PBT die sub keycaps. Upon opening the box, the first thing that will greet you is the Fantech Max Fit 81 itself. Then we have a warranty card, the user manual, a personal note from the CEO of Fantech, a wire keycap and switch puller, and a non-braided USB Type-A to Type-C cable. At first look and touch, the Fantech Max Fit 81 looks quite clean, especially the frosted white variant that I have here with black on white PBT die sub keycaps. The build quality is okay, but since this keyboard is made out of ABS plastic with an FR4 plate, it does flex even with just a slight force. It weighs roughly around 835 grams. In terms of the layout, it features a familiar exploded 75% layout but with some key differences. Not only do we have the typical volume knob, but we also have a 1-inch customizable OLED display on top of it. One thing that's worth noting here is that the OLED display doesn't have a cover from the top case. Aside from that, we have a pretty standard layout with full function rows up top, dedicated arrow keys, and some of the knob cluster keys. The font is the usual rounded typeface found on budget PBT die sub keycaps like this. Now, since the case is semi-transparent, you'll see some of the internals like the mounting points for the gasket mount, which I think adds to its aesthetics. Now, looking at the front side, you'll see a better look of what I'm talking about, and we also have a nice MaxFit 81 badge right here. You can also see the clips that you'll need to pry away in case you want to tear this keyboard apart. Now, flipping it on its side, you'll see that the top cover overlaps the bottom case with a slight angle for better ergonomics, and that the case features a high-profile design for a cleaner look. Turning it on its backside, you'll see more of these gaskets and clips and the USB Type-C port right at the center. And lastly, looking at the bottom, we have four white rubber feet and four flip-out stands, two of which are shorter and all of them has rubber tip as well. We also have here the 2.4GHz USB dongle, nicely tucked inside a magnet. We also have a dedicated power switch and some branding and certifications at the center. You can also see a glimpse of the battery here. I appreciate that the USB dongle has a Fantech branding, but I would have preferred if it says MaxFit 81 instead. Overall, I really like how it looks, clean and interesting. Now looking closer at the keycaps, as I've pointed out earlier, this is made out of durable PBT plastic with die sublimated legends. It is only a single shot plastic, but usually die sub keycaps are thick enough. This one in particular is around 1.4mm, which is pretty standard. In terms of the switches, what we have here is the latest version of the Gatron Yellow, which is the G Pro 2.0. It has improved quality with pre-applied lubricant out of the factory. The top housing is made out of polycarbonate plastic, the bottom housing is made out of nylon PA66, and the stem is made out of palm material. It has an accretion force of around 50 grams and is one of the better options when it comes to budget switches. I also appreciate that the PCB on this keyboard is hot swappable and south facing. Here's a sound test for you guys.
Now, before I share with you what I honestly think about this keyboard, let's tear it apart first so you can have a good idea of how it is constructed. Since I want to take everything apart including the PCB and plate combo, I had to remove the keycaps, switches, and the volume knob. You don't have to do this if you just need access to the bottom case. Let's say you want to add more foam or do the popular tape mod. Now looking closer at the plate mount stabilizers, they are substantially lubed. However, as you've heard on the sound test, even though it has an absurd amount of lubricant, it is still quite rattly so further modifications and tuning are required. Now tearing this keyboard apart is actually easier than you might think given that the cases are held together using just plastic clips. Just use a plastic prying tool and gently slide it around the case like so. Do it a few times until you hear or feel the clips pop out. Once done, you can now gently lift the top cover from each corner, making sure you don't force anything. There you go. The gaskets are actually attached to the cases and not on the plate and are made out of silicon. Here we have the FR4 plate which is nice to see compared to the more common steel or aluminum plate. This offers a good balance between flexibility and rigidity. Here's another look at the plate mount stabilizers. The good thing about this is that this keyboard actually supports screen stabilizers as well. Next we have a plate foam here that if I'm not mistaken is made out of EVA. Then we have a switch pad here which is nice and should help with the overall better acoustics. Next, we have the hot swappable PCB attached to the OLED PCB and the battery, so be careful when lifting it. We also have a bottom case foam that I think is also made out of EVA foam. And finally, we have the 4000 mAh battery. Again, the silicon gaskets are located on the case. It is generally stiff and stiffer than porn gasket, which is another commonly used material here. Now, looking closer at the PCB, it is nicely laid out with useful legends around. We also have the PCB for the OLED display here. The hot swap sockets are made by CIY. Now, I'm the type of person who usually doesn't just refer to the specifications page and call it a day. So I went ahead and confirmed that the PCB and plate do indeed support screw-in stabilizers. Okay, so with the unboxing, parts overview, and teardown process out of the way, let me share with you my honest thoughts about this keyboard and the notable quality issues it has that Fantech needs to address. First, while I appreciate that the hot swappable sockets are south-facing, I can't help but notice that a couple of those sockets are north facing here. I understand that it was done to accommodate the USB Type-C port but I would have preferred if they just place it in another location or perhaps at the daughter board although the latter option would add some cost so I understand the decision. However, there are definitely better ways to do it than compromise how the RGB lighting will look for those who prefer it. Second, I noticed that the OLED display on my unit is crooked which is something I wasn't expecting and just annoying to see. It might be an isolated case but still worth noting. And lastly, which is the most significant quality issue here, is the hot swap sockets. After rebuilding the keyboard back, I noticed that one of the keys isn't working. I checked the switch pins and they are perfectly straight. I tried a different switch, same issue, and this is something that I was hoping I won't encounter as I've already heard a couple of reports about this. So yeah, upon checking, the hot swap sockets unfortunately popped out of its soldering. I'm not sure if it is because of the CIY sockets or because of the soldering job. However, I've used keyboards with CIY hot swap sockets before and this was never an issue so I think it was the latter. Now I took the initiative to take some macro shots just to get a better look at the quality of the soldering and as you can see, it is less than ideal. Some of the pins are barely covered so I hope this will be fixed in the new batch. To be fair, here's a quick look at another PCB with Gateron hot swap sockets. This one is from Skyloom. The good thing here is that I was able to confirm that this is covered by the warranty and Fantech is already aware and has a new shipment upcoming with the supposedly better PCB. I'm also open to making another video with the replacement or upgraded PCB just in case. With that out of the way, let's continue with the rest of the review. By the way, I decided to use the new Cable Mod Premium Laser ABS keycaps here which I did review in our last video. With a semi-transparent case and laser edge keycaps, RGB lighting stands out on this keyboard except on the function rows where the two north facing sockets are located. Look how it messed up the overall illumination of the keyboard. Speaking of RGB lighting, let me show you all of them here. Now in terms of performance, 
NKRO works really well on all modes, including wireless, with up to at least 10 keys at the same time without conflicts. I also didn't encounter any wire stability issues, and the 2.4GHz offers low latency performance with no perceivable input lag. And lastly, in terms of the software, we have a familiar one right here, and inside this, you can create different profiles, multiple layers, adjust key sensitivity, configure the secondary FN layer, and change a keys function to a different one like key combinations, macro, media shortcuts, and mouse functions. We also have the lighting tab wherein you can customize the lighting, adjust brightness, speed, and you can even take advantage of the audio visualizer effect. You can also adjust the sleep mode here, record macros, update firmware, and most importantly, customize the OLED display. Speaking of the OLED display, you can sketch out your preferred design or upload your own animated GIFs and PNGs. However, it is quite limited in terms of replicating GIFs and logos as you can see here. It wasn't able to replicate my GIF intro properly as well as my logo. But at least it was able to show my basic logo right here. So yeah. Overall, to conclude, the Fantech MaxFit 81 offers pretty much everything I'm looking for on a budget mechanical keyboard with a safe 75% layout, gasket mount design with substantial sound dampening material inside, hot swappable switches, customizable volume knob and OLED display, and tri-mode connectivity. However, until they finally fix the quality issue on this keyboard, especially the poor quality hot swap sockets, I won't be able to recommend this keyboard. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. While Fantech did send a review sample, this not a sponsored video. And like I said, I'm open to making a follow-up video in case I get a replacement unit and if the issue is really fixed on the new batch. But for now, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you appreciate the effort I put into this video and see you next time. Have a great day guys. You're awesome.